we were at the vet clinic with our cat one day and a pug dog bounced by. And I said to my husband, I said, I want one of those. And he wanted to know why I wanted a pug. And I said, how can I, even when I feel crappy, how can I not laugh or smile with a little face like that? Hi, zombie. In the therapy dog program, the dogs have to be a year old before they can be tested. So even when I got Igor, I couldn't have him tested until he was a year old. So I volunteered and I did parks and crafts and everything else at Parkwood with them because the people became like family. So then Igor started and he was tested at a year old and he has done over 600 visits now. That's Zombie's older brother, he's 10 and a half and he's done a lot of visits. And he's the one that I actually first started at University Hospital and got involved in this program. Now Zombie, he was tested at a year old like his brother, and I alternate back and forth. I think it's important for the patients because a lot of them, especially the seniors, have had dogs in the past and they have dogs, some of them that are not as long-term, unfortunately, we're finding more and more, say, with what we visit in the hospital. They're here a little bit longer waiting to get into nursing homes. They miss their dogs. Um, not only that, a lot of them, their families are out of town. They don't have anybody else that comes in and visit them. Even the dementia patients, the Alzheimer's patients, they may not know what day it is. They may not know my name, but they know when the dog's coming in. With speech therapy, a lot of the times what will come out of their mouths is the dog name. Nothing else but the dog's name. Same thing with movement. It gives um, somebody that's had a, a heart attack or a stroke, it, reaching out to pet the dog will give them movement that they haven't had before. So it's not just a feel good thing, it's also a therapeutic thing for a lot of these patients. It gives them also something to look forward to every week. The next thing you know, sometimes they're snoring. And I think, oh my goodness, my dogs have fallen asleep on these people. They think it's fabulous because the dog feels comfortable enough to fall asleep and get them. He responds to different personalities. The last lady, I'm not saying that you're not animated, no. but you're chill. So he's chill. But that's yes. true of any. It is. It is. They react to whoever they're with at that point in time. So, yeah. Hi. He says, I am. I like to be this. I like to be this. I think it's that fur and it's that warmth and it's just that comfort of having an animal beside you that the patients can relate to. We even hand out Christmas cards at Christmas time. Or if there's somebody that's really, really struggling, I'll bring in a photograph of the two of them and they can put it up on their wall. A funny boy. How's your week going? Good? Good week? I, you know, you try and have as much fun as you can. I've had patients before, younger patients. I remember, um, unfortunately, a very young patient being palliative. I went in and I showed him videos of the dogs riding on the motorcycles. I could see the look on his family's face behind him. He got to be 21 years old for the 20 minutes that I was in there with the dog. He just got to be a kid. And that's what the most important thing is. Just make them forget about everything that's wrong with them while you're there with the dog. I remember the first time I had been in palliative and the person in the bed next to the one that I was at had passed away and I got home and I was telling my husband about it and even my mom she said to me is that going to stop you from visiting and I said no if anything else it makes me realize that you know what you're there with these people sometimes they have nobody else but you you know it just kind of made it that much stronger that I wanted to I couldn't even imagine not doing this they give a lot of comfort in a lot of different ways